What's good Raider Nation? Today, I want to talk to you guys about Keith Smith and Alec Ingold. Both fullbacks have been very good in certain aspects of the game. What I want to do today is I want to give you guys my thoughts and opinions and show you guys film of these two guys. And I want to compare their run blocking, their pass blocking, their special team skills, as well as their playmaking abilities. So with that, let's get right into it. So what I want to do first is show you guys some run blocking plays by Alec Ingold. Starting with this play against the Arizona Cardinals. Now the guy he blocks falls, but he doesn't actually get pancaked, he trips. Alec Ingold and Rich Incognito make contact with the first guy and push him back into that second guy, who then trips and Alec Ingold then jumps on top of him, which is great. He gets on top of him and makes sure he's not able to get up. Alec Ingold isn't the greatest blocker, but he's a smart, efficient blocker, and that's what you need your fullback to do. And you see that in this next play against the Rams. He's going to block Taylor Rapp, who is a high draft pick in this last draft, and he cut blocks him perfectly. Now, he doesn't lay him out, he doesn't pancake him, but had there not been that extra defender, this play could have picked up many, many more yards. So he does a great job. Moving on, I want to show you guys this play, Alec Ingold, run blocking against the Arizona Cardinals, because it's a great play by Ingold. One of the things that is missed is oftentimes, fans don't necessarily know where hands are supposed to land, where helmets are supposed to land, but in this play, Alec Ingold showcases what he's supposed to do. He gets his helmet on the right side of that linebacker, and that's going to show you exactly where the running back should run. But more than that, it allows you to control your player. You will not be beat if you get your helmet on the correct side and you stay low. All right, Alec Ingold does a great job in this play doing that, and I give him a lot of props for this block. Anyways, I want to transition and show you guys some improvements I need Alec Ingold to make. If he wants to be our starting fullback for the next 5 to 10 years, he needs to improve on certain parts of his game, and one of that is aggressiveness. Because in this play, he has a running start to block the defensive end, and there is no reason why this defensive end should push him back. Alec Ingold needs to run full speed and put this guy on his ass. He should not be getting pushed backwards by the defensive end at all. So I need him to get more aggressive. I needed him to fight through these blocks. And this isn't the first time I watched him in the first two games hit someone and not stay on that guy. Because a lot of the times that I saw him block, he was either hitting a guy and bouncing off that guy, he was hitting a guy and the guy would quickly shed him, or he was flat out just missing the blocks. And we can't have this. Absolutely cannot have this. If he wants to be our starting fullback, we're only using a fullback a couple of times a game anyways, but he needs to improve his blocking. And when you compare his blocking to Keith Smith's blocking, I think Keith Smith is much better. He's a much more polished run blocker. Honestly, I don't think there's any comparison. If you guys actually watch the film of Keith Smith and you actually watch the film of Alec Ingold, you know who's the better run blocker. And that's what a fullback is in there to do. He's in there to run block. Not saying Alec Ingold can't improve because he's only a rookie, right? Let's be honest. He's going to get so much better. But to be realistic, Keith Smith's better today. And this play sums it up. When it's a zone play, he knows that he doesn't need to use his power. All he has to do is make the smart, efficient block and hook the guy that he's going to block. That's what he does. The running back has a nice lane if he's able to break that tackle, which of course he didn't. But had he been able to break his tackle... Keith Smith set it up perfectly for him. At the same time, there's a lot that Keith Smith can do that Alec Ingold can, and there's things Alec Ingold can do that Keith Smith can't. But at the same time, I don't want you guys to get this impression that Keith Smith is way better than Alec Ingold. He's definitely better, but Keith Smith isn't perfect either. He's been pancaked in the past, but that's pretty much expected with fullbacks. You're playing a tough position in order to you're running full speed and someone else is running full speed and you're hitting each other at full speed. And it's expected that people are going to fall and people are going to get pancake. You're, you're not expected to win every block. But honestly, when I watched Alec Ingold, I think he lost more blocks than I saw him win. That's my personal opinion of him. I think he needs to get better. I think a year on the practice squad is going to do him wonders because he can already make plays. right? And that's what I want to talk about next is playmaking. There's a reason why Alec Ingold was regarded as the best fullback coming out of college. Keith Smith's not a playmaker, but Alec Ingold is. He can catch, he can run with the ball, he's very good, he's much better than Smith. And this play right here sums it up. He's going to run a route, the defensive linemen get into the quarterback's face. Look at Ingold making it easy on the quarterback. 
He gets his hand up. He side shuffles. He kind of flows with the quarterback. And the quarterback finds him. He catches the ball. And these are the types of things that Keith Smith will never be able to do, in my opinion. And this is why I really, really like Alec Ingold. And besides that, he also runs routes. When you put Keith Smith out on the slot or out wide, no one cares. No one's going to panic and say, hey, there's a fullback out here. Do we cover him with a linebacker or a safety, a corner? When Alec Ingold's out there, he'll burn your linebacker. So there's a lot Ingold can do that Keith Smith can't really do. So in my opinion, when it comes to run blocking, yes, yeah, Smith is much better. When it comes to playmaking, there's no question. Alec Ingold's way better. Keith Smith cannot make plays. It's just a fact. Moving on, talking a little bit about pass blocking, I think Keith Smith's much better than Ingold. I don't want to show you guys any plays with Keith Smith. I want to show you guys plays with Ingold because that's the interesting player. The thing I noticed is he misses chip blocks, easy chip blocks. He misses them, and we can't have that. Yes, he can make catches. Yes, he can make plays, but you have to be able to protect the quarterback. I would never want Derek Carr to get hurt because Alec Ingold doesn't chip block. Now, he's not supposed to chip block on every single play, but there's definitely plays in which he flat out misses, and you can just tell that he puts a little bit of an elbow or a little bit of effort, but it's really not something that's going to stop someone in their tracks. So I think that's something I need Alec Ingold to work on is his pass blocking. Now, this isn't a huge part of playing fullback because, to be honest, would you rather have a tight end in there or a fullback in there? Both players can block. Both players can run routes. And if it was between Keith Smith and a tight end, of course, we would all take the tight end. The last part that I think everyone always leaves out, and I think is one of the most important parts, is special teams. One of the things I noticed in the preseason games, Alec Ingold does not play extra points or kickoffs. And last year, Keith Smith played on both of these teams. So right away, that's kind of interesting that Smith was hurt. And even though they used Ingold as his replacement, they didn't replace Keith Smith's role as far as kickoffs or the extra point and i think that's kind of interesting in my personal opinion and i want to show you guys plays in which alec ingold did play on the special teams because i saw a lot of his plays and you know i wasn't really impressed personally i think he can definitely improve and i think he will uh, one of the first plays i watched was this play right here he honestly doesn't even block anyone you know he kind of gets uh lost within all the plays and then the second special teams play i watched same situation he was playing on the uh, kick return and he got laid on his ass and to be honest that doesn't shock me alec ingold's not aggressive he doesn't go and look for that contact he needs to he needs to develop that aspect of his game not only is it going to carry over from being a fullback it will also carry over into his special teams now he also plays on punt coverage and he does a pretty decent job. I watched him. Uh, he shuffles in uh, from the outside spot. He comes to the inside a couple times. He doesn't do a great job, but um, he's okay. You know, I think he probably did fill in for Keith Smith on this. But when I watch Keith Smith, rather it's kick, rather it's punt, whatever it is, kick coverage, punt coverage, he does a great job. You know, he's always running downfield and making tackles. And that's one of the reasons why I think Keith Smith is going to end up on this roster. He's a very good special teams player. And I know oftentimes people say that's not a big deal, but special teams is a huge deal. Being able to play the starting fullback job, run block, pass block, and then go and make plays on special teams, you're just showing that you have that much more value. Because let's be honest, how many players really play, right? You have 11 starters on offense, 11 on defense. Between your defensive line, your wide receivers, your tight end, you know, you throw in another 10 players. You're already looking at like 35 players that are going to play a lot. And you don't want those players necessarily playing special teams. And then you take out your offensive linemen. No offensive linemen is going to be playing kick return or punt return. They're just not, right? For the most part, they're not fast enough. So really, that leaves you with your backup linebackers, your backup running backs, your backup safeties, fullbacks, corners, right? You, you're left with these players to play on these, these special team positions. So that brings you that much more value. And I don't think Alec Ingold's there yet. That's my personal opinion. I don't know how much special teams he played in college. I'm assuming he probably didn't, especially since he was one of the best fullbacks in college. He probably just focused on playing fullback. Now, if I had to guess today, I think Alec Ingold makes the practice squad. I know some people might say there's no way Alec Ingold clears waivers. 
if we wanted to put him on practice squad. But the truth is, he's a fullback. Half the teams in the league don't even use a fullback. The other half that do, half of those teams already have their fullback, right? Not many teams are looking for a fullback and not many teams are looking for a rookie fullback. Fullback is one of those positions where you have to do a lot of dirty work. Run block, pass block, play special teams. I think making plays comes last to run blocking, pass blocking, and special teams. I think those three aspects of the game are much more important. If you want to have someone make plays, throw it to your tight end, throw it to your receiver, throw it to your running back. That's my personal opinion. And Vic Tafer actually believes the same thing. He believes the Raiders either keep two fullbacks or Keith Smith makes the roster and Alec Ingold ends up on the practice squad. Also, always remember that going to a practice squad team, you can always get paid more from one team or the other. So if John Gruden's going to want to keep him and another team's going to want him on their practice squad, Keith Smith's going to get to decide who he wants to play for and who, you know, technically pays him the most money. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hope you guys all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time with the Game Film Breakdown.